This is Texans TV. Get the inside scoop on OTAs, and Lovey Smith is wired for sound. Boys on defense. Oh, good. Texans 360 is now. We are ready to rock in Houston. Rock and roll. You already know what time it is, man. Touchdown, Texans. I got fleets for all y'all. He's in rock and roll. Guess when you think you've seen it all, there's always something else. Let's go, let's go home, let's go home. Oh my goodness, it's so wonderful that you're with us. This is Texans 360, and I'm Drew Doherty, your host, with my good friend, D.P. Sidhu. How you doing? I'm fantastic, Drew. Good to be on, as always. It's great to have you. We've got so much to discuss. We do. Talking about OTAs, but before we do that, we want to let you know what's going on today in this program, because woof, woof, we got a birthday to celebrate, plus she's going one-on-one -on -one with a rookie, as well as a guy who was a rookie last year. It's a lot of fun to get to, but... We start with the news of the week and OTAs, organized team activities began this week at the Houston Methodist Training Center. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically practice. The veterans, the rookies, almost all the team. It was a voluntary workout and voluntary time, but just about everybody was there and Lovey Smith discussed it and he is happy at the participation and the stuff he got to see on the field, wasn't he? Yeah, it's the first time we've really seen the vets and the rookies and the new free agents all together on the team. I mean, we say practice, but very loosely worded right. practice because there's no hitting, there's no live contact. But you do get to see some 11 on 11, some seven on seven action. Uh, it's the first time to sort of see the team come together with the new coaching staff. But, you know, Lovey said, he said, don't take too much stock into the rep count. Who's on for, there's no first, second, third team, right, anything right. like that. They're just trying to get guys out there and give a lot of guys as many reps as they can. Some guys, they're ramping up. Some guys will get fewer and get more as the weeks go on. But still, it's good to see the entire team together. Yes, and believe you me, she has her checklist and she's <laughs> making sure she knows which guy's here and which guy's not. So most of them were pretty much all checked off. In there. Lots of numbers to learn. Lots of new Lots numbers of new to numbers. learn. Uh, you brought up the offense. You brought up the defense. We're going to go in depth about both of them a little later. But now we're putting a wire on the head coach himself. Lovey Smith wore a mic at the first OTA. Check this out. Hey, how about, how about, a, how about a guy? Man, appreciate oh, yeah, yeah. it. Huh? How about a guy? It, man, Father, yeah. Man. My daughter was born yesterday. Hey, it's real now. <laughs> you, can't be dry, you can't drop any balls now. <laughs> Miss tackles, any of that. Oh, now I, you got to do everything right. We have seven grandson, and I love them to death. Our, our middle son has a, one of the twins is a female. She's seven. So today we may go, I love you, Papa. I love you more. I love you, Papa. We may do that for five minutes back and forth. And like daughters, man. Mike Tiffin, there you go. Hand. Hand. It's good. Huh? Don't stop being around Hello? me. Hello? It's all the time. Is he Mike though? Nah, it, I give him that. He's all the time. I give that. Oh, now we're going to get, now we're going to get everybody talking to me now. That's defense. Put the ball on 18 yard line. Going in. One's on defense. Oh, good. Hey, hey, T. Brooks. Good. Good, 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 good. That's getting better. You're getting better, Dale. Hey, hey, Davis. Davis. That's a heck of a throw. Okay, that's not all bad by you. That's a great throw. Good play. Good play. Flip around. Let's go. Good. Now turn. Now turn the break, George. Good. Hey, Taylor. Good. Bring it up. Hey, guys, bring it in tight. Hey, man, good work. Good work. Get on schedule. We meet today. We'll go over our schedule for tomorrow, which will be a little bit different. Fair enough? Cool to see Lovey Smith with a wire on. And, hey, he had, you know, his eyes on Davis Mills, seeing what the quarterback was doing. And you, you got to always put an asterisk by everything you see out there at OTAs because it's like you mentioned. They're not tackling. They're not blocking. They're not hitting. But it was cool, nonetheless, to see him command that huddle and spread the ball around the field to all those different targets, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Davis Mills, everyone wants to see that year one to year two jump. But I think so far, all you can sort of look at is how his offseason's gone. And yeah. he's done all the right things. I mean, Levy Smith said he's been in the building. Every day the facility's been open. I talked to Nico Collins. I know we're going to hear from him a little bit later on. But he said that they were out there throwing out Atlanta at his old high school. He's trying to work on the chemistry with his offense, with his receivers, with some of the backs. You know, I think that, you know, there's a lot of excitement around Davis Mills and what he could 
could do, especially when you get a run game going around him. Yeah, and now nobody's saying, well, Davis Mills is gonna be an all-pro quarterback this year. If he does, that's cool, but nobody's guaranteeing that. Now, one thing that did give me a little bit of more optimism, make me a little bit more excited was hearing from Brandon Cooks. You just mentioned what Nico Collins said, and they all, all had a great rookie connection last year. But Brandon Cooks, when he spoke after Tuesday's work, was talking about how excited he was to see what he saw from Davis Mills, how important that day was, the the, the lead up to it, the, the stuff they're gonna do after you know the camp ends and stuff before training camp starts, like you mentioned, those Atlanta workouts. Mm -hmm. He's very, very confident what he's seen from Davis Mills, and Brandon Cooks has seen a lot of really good quarterbacks. He's played with Brady, he's played, played with Breeze and, and Jared Goff and the rest. I like what I heard from Cooks talking about Davis Mills. Yeah, I mean, Cooks is a veteran. He's played with, like you said, a lot of different quarterbacks. So I think that connection that he has with Davis Mills is going to help both of them. And it'll, it'll obviously help Davis Mills, you know, to have a veteran receiver sort of telling him and leading him. And, and you know, he can sort of compensate for Davis Mills when, when things go rough. That first touchdown that Davis Mills ever threw in Cleveland when he yeah. came in in the second half uh, in relief for Tyrod Taylor. He was just sort of thrown into the fire. Uh, he threw that touchdown to Brandon Cooks, and it was something that Brandon Cooks said he saw on the sideline, and he wanted to go to that play, it and, and, and Mills went to him. Davis Mills last year wasn't really the starter. He wasn't the backup. He was sort of, he, he went back and forth, and, and general manager Nick Casario said it was sort of a tough deal for Davis last year, so I'm curious to see with the entire offseason, you know, getting a majority of reps and, and not really having to be the, having the rookie learning curve uh, to sort of overcome that this year, where Davis Mills goes and how he builds on last year's performance. All right, you brought up Nico Collins quite a bit, and we will hear from Nico Collins after the break. Don't you move a muscle. Texans 360 rolls on. We're back. Texans 360, Drew Deepy. You had a chance to catch up with Nico Collins and wide receiver looking to do big things next season, isn't he? Yeah, he wanted to get better this offseason. He wanted to build his chemistry, and he certainly did a lot of things to sort of improve both of those this offseason with Davis Mills. Worked out in Atlanta with Mills, and Deepy went one-on-one -on -one with Collins. Check this out. It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. Joining me, second-year wide receiver Nico Collins. Nico, must be nice to not hear rookie yeah, anymore, yeah, it's right? crazy. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. You know, he came fast, though, but, you know, I'm glad, you know, be – you got second year under my belt, you know, ready for year two, for sure. All right, so it's OTAs. Lovey Smith said this is really a period for individual improvement. Yeah, so, sure. you know, what, what are your goals here through the next few weeks? No, I'm just working on things I need to prove on from um, last year. You know, I feel like it's a lot of things to work on my game. Um, I feel like it's a great opportunity for everybody you know, to come in, you know, great get time with the quarterbacks, um, work on the things I feel like, you know, that need to be worked on to so improve for the season. You know, so I feel like it's a great time for everybody to come out here and work on the things, you know, everybody needs to work on. What is that process like, working on the chemistry between you and Davis Mills? I know you guys have worked a little bit this offseason before you even got to OTA, uh -huh. so tell us a little bit about how you and him plan to get better, working on your timing. Yeah, we, all, we all plan to get better, man. You know, um, Davis, he, um, he planned to, you know, throw a position, you know, um, for quarterbacks, receivers, and tight ends over this offseason. Um, so it was a great opportunity for the Wild House tight ends go out there and play. Um, you know, get the timing down right, you know, get the footwork because, you know, we ended our season kind of early, you know, didn't, didn't like that feeling, you know, but I feel like it was a great time, you know, to get back on the field, you know, um, get that juice back going, you know, get the timing back right, you know, so we come out here prepared for OTA. Is it different working with a quarterback like that off season, uh, you know, in a different place, just you guys just working out? It's a little bit more fun, a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, yeah you know, it is, it is kind of fun, you know, different scenery, you know, we in Atlanta, you know, we in his state, you know, his city. <laughs> You know, you know, he's from Georgia, so um, it was great to go down there, you know, for a good week, you know, get a great week of work, you know, um, with everybody, you know, so I feel like that, that helped out a lot. I feel like wide receivers and quarterbacks, it's not just the chemistry on the field, but you guys have to sort of get in sync off the field, too. Were you able to do that as well? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we did go to dinner, though. We did, but, you know, after we got down with the throwing session, you know, it was kind of one of those, like, all right, we're going to go lay down because, you know, <laughs> we got back. We all flew back you know, to Houston, you know, Sunday, you know, to work and get ready for workouts Monday, so. You know, that was a pretty, you know, it was a grind week. You know, it really wasn't no vacation, you know, but it was a work, you know, work week, you know, but um, my time off, you know, we got to enjoy it for sure. All right, so you got Pep Hamilton now running the offense. He was here last year, but is, you know, how, what is the adjustment like to a new system for you? Does it, you know, what are the challenges? Does it feel sort of similar to last year? You know, what excites you the most about this offense? This um, you know, everything, you know, it's a new offense, you know, new new coaches, you know, I feel like it's a great opportunity for everybody, you know. Um, as I feel like now OTAs, you know, we're going out here to get the timing down right, you know, find the things, you know, what works and what doesn't work. You know, I feel like it's a great opportunity, you know, to find everything out. 
you know, so we all here working, you know, after everybody's here, you know, we stacking days, you know, we're getting better every day, you know, I feel like that's what's going to count at the end of the day, you know, count on Sundays. I was going to say, and you got, you've got a new uh, wide receiver in your group, John Mechie, we saw him out here, obviously he's not practicing yet, but you know what, when you think back to your rookie, your rookie experience and OTAs, you know, what, what are going to be the challenges for him, what does he really need to get better at right now? Man, I say hydrate. That's the first one, because it, it get hot. Basically. I'm still sweating, even though I'm not even running. But I say um, just you know, the playbook, man, you know, just the end of the day, it's football. You know, it's the thing you've been doing your entire life. You know, it's just another level. You know, it's nothing changes. You know, it's just got to up one. You know, you got to up your game a little bit. You got to do a little more, you know. But, you know, we, we all there for them. Got to bring them in, arms over for them. You know, let them know that. All the rookies know that, you know. it's We all love, it's our brotherhood. You know, we all here for you, you know. Whatever you need, just let us know, you know, but we all gonna get better for sure. You know, you know, when he get back for count, man, we're gonna work. And we all gonna work for sure. Excited for that. We're Sorry. excited to see you back out here on the field as sure. well, Nico. Thanks Thank so much you. for the time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Enough about the offense. Time to talk some defense with a rookie. Linebacker Christian Harris is coming up next on Texans 360. You ready? No. It's the 2022 Texans schedule. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at here, right? Uh, yeah. 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 I, already, I already knew that was bad. <laughs> the top of the star is really yeah. bad. I'm looking at this, though. That's good. I tried to draw the teeth and everything. Yeah, I forgot the go. bottom teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. a horse. Duh. <laughs> oh! I think it's... We already flipped it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I meant the twirl yeah. it. That is real blooper. That's all right. That's a cool little blooper. Yeah. I think that's what you're doing. It's oh, like shit. a little dot for the... Picasso, I like it. I like it, Picasso. Yeah. Who did that, Ross? Yeah. <laughs> I killed it. Killed that one. Hey, hey. I, I hate it for some of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Texas 360, Drew Doherty, DP Sidhu, and listen, we've been talking about the offense for the first half of the show. Time to give the defense some love. At the back end, likely going to be three or four new starters there in the secondary. Yeah, I mean, that's what you wanted to get better at, right? And we heard Lovey Smith talk about it before the draft, that you can't do what you want to do on this defense without improving at the cornerback yeah. position. And they certainly did that. Cornerback, safety, they, they took two of their first three picks. Um, they they wanted to get better on the secondary. So a lot of hope there. They signed a lot of free agents on the front end as well, the, mm -hmm. the front seven. So um, I think Levy Smith, having done what he did with his defense last year and performed the way they did, he knows where the holes are. He knows where the gaps are. He knows what he needs to get better. And he knows exactly what type of personnel he needs to do that. Yeah, you brought up the draft picks that the Texans spent there in the secondary. Maybe the premier defensive free agent signing, Steven Nelson, yeah. pretty good cornerback. I had a chance to talk with him. He was fun. But talking about that front seven, I mean, they do need to keep getting after the quarterback. And they've added waves and waves of guys who in the past have done so and look to provide some quality depth there. Not depth, but quality depth, right? Yeah, Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison. I mean, those are the two guys that I think of over a decade of experience each. And, you know, it was, it was cool to see at OTAs, Jerry Hughes out there on the sideline with some of uh, the younger defensive linemen. And they were so engaged and they were really into all the plays. Roy Lopez made a play um, in, in team drills and they were all sort of <laughs> celebrating. And I love that Jerry Hughes was already in the mix with them. And uh, we see Jonathan Grenard out there, who's now a veteran of this defensive line group. It's I mean, bananas. it's crazy. I feel like he's just a rookie. But, you know, this team has definitely gone through a lot of changes. I like to see that veteran leadership. And that D-line, there's so much rotation that goes in and out. So you can never have too many D-linemen in Levy Smith's defense. But I'm curious to see what these veterans add to this group, along with the, some of the younger guys. Yeah, and then in the middle, the linebacker core returns some faces like Kamu Grugier-Hill and Christian Kirksey. They add some, and Christian Harris, who we're going to hear from in just a moment, and some other guys but that's a, a crew that you need to see improvement from as well, don't you? Yeah, and Lovey Smith expects so much of his linebackers. I mean, they have to be athletic, they have to be fast, yeah. have to see where things are going, but linebackers love to play in Lovey Smith's defense. I mean, Lovey says, I really want everyone to love to play in my defense, but I do feel like he's got a soft spot for those linebackers because they are asked to do so much on the field. So I love to see that Kirksey is back and Kamu Grugia-Hill, we saw what he did last year. And then, you know, like you said, Christian Harris, 
who, you know, what, what is, this guy learned how to play linebacker at Alabama <laughs> and now is being drafted by the Texans. And he was so thrilled uh, to the fact that he gets to play in Lovey Smith's defense as a linebacker. He was, he could not have been happier. I mean, he was crying. He was so excited. That's pretty good uh, excitement right there if it brings you to tears. So <laughs> we're not going to bring you to tears now, but not we want to hear no. a little bit more from Christian Harris. Joining me now, Alabama linebacker, now Houston Texan linebacker, Christian Harris. Christian, the Texans moved up five spots to get you in the third round. What was your reaction when you got oh, the call? Man, I was excited, speechless. Um, I was really just sitting there, I mean, obviously with my family. I mean, I just saw that call and, I mean, instantly I started crying almost. So, <laughs> I mean, I got on the phone, my eyes started tearing up. Uh, I mean, I'm very excited. I, I love the defense that they have. I mean, they were able to show me how I was utilized. I'll be able to be utilizing their scheme and the success that I can have with that. So, I mean, even thinking about John Messi too as well. Um, it's their thing, like being able to play with those guys on the same teams is definitely exciting for me, so. Yeah, I was going to say, okay, so John Mechie, your teammate at yeah. Alabama, you, you yeah. join him, the Texans go back to back, Alabama players. Uh, let's start with him. What's it going to be like playing with him again? Lovely. I mean, same thing we did at Bama. That's the goal, obviously. I mean, we want to win. That's the main goal. I mean, he's going to do his thing on the side of that ball, and I'm going to do my side on the defensive side, like bring the best out of each other as we, best we can on and off the field. I mean, that's what we did at, at Alabama, so I mean, it helped us be successful, so we got to keep that going. I'm excited. All right, wide receiver and DB in high school, and then you switched to linebacker at Alabama. So, yeah. I mean, what sort of transition period was that like for you? I mean, how did that come about? I know there were a lot of injuries at Alabama that sort of forced you into playing linebacker, but is that what you expected? Was I mean, you really had a lot of success early on. What I mean, what do you credit that transition to? You just doing so well at that spot. God, uh, I mean, I'm believing in myself. My whole my whole decision, you know, coming to college. I mean, playing the position I never played before, going to Alabama, it was already a lot of people doubting me and, and all of that. So, I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I just better myself and I continue to do that and I will continue to do that. So, I mean, by doing that, I've had a lot of success letting guys take the way. Um, I mean, obviously I've been having, a, being blessed enough to play with a lot of great teammates um, who have that same mindset as me and who also want to be great. So being able to push, my, push myself and push them together, I mean, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm all over the place right now. Oh, <laughs> Our sideline reporter, John Harris, after you were drafted by the Texans, he said you will hear him on the field, and I'm not talking about his voice. He was talking about how he could hear, you could hear your hits, that like you're a thumper uh, on the field, your hits on ball carriers. Tell us a little bit about the strengths of your game and, and what sort of player you are when you're out there on the field. I think I'm a very, I mean, for me, for one, I mean, already being from Alabama, I want to dominate every single one of my opponents, um, every snap that I possibly can. And, I mean, I think that's, that should be your goal every single play. And I think, you know, for me, playing a lot of positions in my lifetime, I've been able to show my versatility playing, you know, linebacker now. So, I mean, I'm able to sit in the box and, and move around a lot. And, uh, I mean, I'm really excited about that. You get to <laughs> reunite with Don John Mechie and Derek Stingley. And uh, yeah. with the, we're excited to, to have you here with the Houston Texans. Christian, Definitely. congrats. Oh, uh, enjoy the night. And you thank know you. what? I, I love that you're so emotional. I, I, I feel it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Dogs and scholarships, it's a pretty good combination. It's all coming up next on Texans 360. Today is Kirby's first birthday party, and we're so excited to partner with the Houston Texans and America's Vet Dogs. Now, Kirby is being trained to support a veteran who has PTSD or any type of disability. We're so excited to be out here. This is the perfect way to support our veterans, to support our purpose of feeding the human spirit, and to support the Houston Texans. We love our partnership with the Houston Texans. We're out here at Kirby's first birthday party uh, here at Kroger. We have uh, Harris County. He's got adoptable dogs here. It's a great day. We've got my dog, Valor and Buddy here. So, uh, no, it's been a great day. Uh, 
Uh, they grow up so fast. First birthday <laughs> party for Kirby the pup, our, uh, our best pal. Uh, you're one of our best pals too, but not yeah. like a dog. You're no. a deep so you're a human woman, so that's yeah, good. I uh, I'm Drew Doherty, and hey, what's cooler than dogs? Scholarships, free education. We love that, don't we? Always a great thing. Hard to top pups, but I think a scholarship would do that. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. And the Texans recently handed out some scholarships as well as tours of the football facilities here. Recognize the students across the Houston area. Um, Reliant does a great job teaming up with the Texans. I think the last 17 years, they've given out over $600,000 over to 100 students. Um, we're here to celebrate them with a $10,000 scholarship from Reliant, teamed up with the Texans. It's just a really big deal. And these particular students today have earned it through their academics, um, through their athletic careers. We have state champions here. We have people that play multiple sports. Their academics are like, like 4.6, 3.8. So another cool part was they got an opportunity to kind of view everything behind the scenes. They got to see the locker room, the team meeting room, which is like a sacred place um, where they ate lunch at, different part of the locker room, the hallway, the whole nine. So they got the, kind of the whole Texans experience today. Good. Like they said earlier, this is our team auditorium. Uh, we have offensive meetings in here, actually. $10,000 is a big blessing for me because like, I don't have to take out student loans or I don't have to be in debt by the time I graduate. And I think that's like the biggest stressor for a lot of kids right now. Financially, it'll help me a lot. It, it really will, especially with the decision I took at, um, to commit to you know, Texas Tech. After many sports and I met after many like sacrifice, after many you know, wins, ups and downs, like I mentioned before, um, it, it really did pay off. So thank you so much. We love you guys and congratulations. That's all we got for this week's show. But next week, round two, week two of OTAs. And it's going to be awesome. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. It's always great to see you. Love Deacon. being here anytime you want, Drew. Yes. And don't forget, like us, come to the games next fall. Go to NRG Stadium and go to HoustonTexans.com or the Houston Texans mobile app to find more information about tickets and being a part of the game day experience. There's nothing like it. Hey, for Tyler Marcotte, Jonathan Johnson, Cookie, and Tyler Sudarth and the rest of the folks that put this show together, I'm Drew Doherty, and we will see you next week on Texans 360. So long. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.